Y'all can be seated. Forgot to ask this a couple weeks ago. I normally ask this at the beginning of every year. How many of you guys made some New Year's resolutions? Did anybody make New Year's resolutions? Anybody? Raise your hand if you made a New Year's resolution, a New Year's goal. Okay, a few of you. Um, I make New Year's resolutions every year. Uh, generally, they're the same resolutions, and generally, I fail at them every time. Um, the two resolutions that I have miserably failed out for the last four years, uh, one is that I want to dunk a basketball. Um, I've told you guys this before. I believe that it can happen. I believe that I can fly. I believe that I can touch the sky. Um, I do believe that. Um, and the other one is that I want to make the cut at the Missouri Amateur uh, Championship. It's a golf tournament. Um, I've become very, very, like this year, I, I got really close to dunking a basketball. I worked out every day with Nathan Stabile for like four months. If you want to stand up and just show him your arm? No, I'm kidding. I'm joking. Um, uh, it, he's very strong. He, he's very fit. And we worked out, uh, we worked out for like four months and I did like squat jumps and I did jump training. He can vouch, he can vouch for me on that. And there was one game that I played in, uh, is a STL sleepers game. And I was playing and it was halftime. My legs felt pretty good. I went up to try to dunk and I was like an inch away, literally. So it actually, I got the full ball above the rim, hit off the back rim, bounced out. And, uh, and I'm, no, like, I'm known as like, okay, we play up in a league up in North County, and I'm honestly just known as like the little white boy in the league. And so it was towards the end of the game, we actually had a fast break. My legs felt really good. And I went up to literally try dunking in the game. Same thing happened, bounced off the rim and bounced out. We were winning by a bunch at this time. The ref like literally started laughing because I had been in the league for a while, laughed, blew the whistle and said, game over, we're done. Literally called the game after I tried to do that. He's like, this is ridiculous. Um, but I didn't dunk. I didn't dunk, um, stopped working out. <laughs> uh, haven't, haven't touched a gym in about eight months and, uh, and uh, haven't, haven't done that. And then we aren't gonna talk about how I didn't make the cut at the Missouri Amateur Championship this year. And the reason that I'm not going to talk much about it, the reason that it really doesn't bother me that much is that those resolutions just aren't that big of a deal. Let's be honest. If I never dunk a basketball, it's okay. If I don't make the cut in the Missouri Amateur Championship, life goes on. Um, that one's a little tougher to swallow for me. But again, not that big of a deal. And, and the good thing is, is I just write them down again the next year, right? There's always next year, 2020. You know, not off to a super hot start, but um, maybe this is my year. There's always going to be another shot, um, right, at this golf tournament or at dunking a basketball unless something crazy happens. Um, and the reason that I share that is um, I think your life and the call on your life as a middle school or high school student, I think the potential that God has placed in you and what God wants to do through you in middle school and high school I don't think it's just like, eh, not a big deal. I would say that it's massive. I would say that it's huge. I would say that it's much bigger, much bigger than anything that you could possibly even imagine. Seniors in the room, I think the potential that God has for you, your last year of high school is massive. Middle schoolers, I think it's absolutely huge. And here's the deal. You don't get another shot at it. You don't get another middle school journey. You, you don't get to go to high school twice, at least most of us, right? Like, like you get one shot. You get one shot. There's a, there's a story in the Old Testament uh, that's a pretty interesting story uh, in, found in the book of Esther. And there's a, there's a woman named Esther, and uh, she is a Jewish woman. The king doesn't know she's a Jewish woman, and she finds favor in the eyes of this king. And, and she, uh, she, she kind of becomes the, the queen, essentially. And there's a guy named Haman. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think that might be how it's pronounced. But this guy named Haman didn't like the Jewish people and was like, hey, he goes to the king. He's like, hey, can, are, will you allow me to kill all of the Jewish people? And the king said, yes. Um, and, and so, again, this, this woman, Esther, is a Jewish woman. And this king, who she has favor in the eyes of, is saying all of the Jewish people, there's an order for all of them to be killed. 
And so she has a decision to make, and we aren't going to talk long about this. We're going to have an interview. We're going to have a conversation. But she does. She does. If you read through the narrative, you would acknowledge that there's a dilemma here, okay? There's a massive dilemma. She could stay silent. She could stay quiet. She could not say anything, okay? Maybe the king wouldn't find out that she herself was a Jewish woman, okay? Maybe eventually God would, you know, bring about justice, and maybe eventually the Jewish people would be saved, whatever it is, right? But people would die. Lives were at stake. If she stays, if she stays quiet, lives are at stake. If she speaks up, if she speaks up, she might be killed in that moment. This is a time period where no one goes and tells the king what to do, especially a woman in this time period. This is, this is unheard of. This is crazy. And then she'll blow her cover. He's going to find out that she herself is a Jewish woman, and he just said that all the Jewish people can be killed. And so if she speaks up, then her reputation is at stake, and potentially her life is at stake. And there's this guy named Mordecai. It's her uncle. is a Jewish man. And he, and he asks a question, and he doesn't ask this question to you. He doesn't ask this question to me. This was, he doesn't know me, doesn't know you. But I believe that there's a truth in this question for all of us that is transcendent. I think it transcends time and space, and I think, I think, I think it's just interesting for us to think about before we start our conversation about social media and as we end this series. And this is the question. Esther 4.14, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. It's quite possible. And who knows? Who knows? But maybe you've come to your royal position for such a time as this. Other translations say, maybe you've been made queen for such a time as this. In other words, maybe God has placed you in this urgent time in history, this dangerous time in history right now for such a time as this, for you to speak up, for you to stand up for what's right, for you to go do what you are called to do to where people can be saved. And it's an extraordinary story. If we had more time, she goes to the king, finds favor in his eyes. These people are saved. This remnant saved because of her bravery. And the reason that I asked the question, again, I think this is biblical. We could go to a bunch of New Testament passages. What if, what if God has you as a middle school student for such a time as this? What if he has you right where you're at, in your schools, in your hallways, in your friend groups, in your spheres of influence for such a time as this? I'm not going to get into how crazy this world is, but it's an urgent time. I think there's always an urgent time. There's an unseen reality in our world where people are walking and talking and living and breathing, but spiritually they're dying. And what if Jesus says to you, hey, I have you right where you're at for such a time as this, to speak up, to stand up for what's right, to be the people that I've called you be. Lives are at stake. Eternity is in front of, is in front of us. People are dying. People are spiritually bankrupt. And we, the church, are the only ones who can do anything about it. I believe that with all my heart. It's an urgent call. The message of Jesus is urgent. It is. And I think for many of us, for many of us, the unseen realities in our world that we've kind of talked about throughout this series, the unseen realities that should bring about a sense of urgency, a sense of excitement, a sense of passion that God has me right where I am to be the person I'm called to be, to stand up for what's right, to share the greatest message of all time so that people could find life right now and for ever, I think the urgency at times gets masked. The unseen realities in our world get masked by stuff we're just looking at every day. The stuff that we, <laughs> that honestly, I was going to say that we think is important, but we know it's really not important, but we spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours thinking about it and obsessing over it. And I think it makes a massive impact in our lives. And some of you middle schoolers are like, I don't even have social media. No, you have video games though. 
There are plenty of different things that we occupy our time with that, to be honest with you, aren't that big of a deal, but we make them this, at least in our minds, we make them the biggest priority of our lives. And I think at times we are losing our place in history. We are, we are losing our sense of urgency in the fact that God has us right here, right now for a specific purpose. And if this is true, if every moment matters right now, if every conversation you have with people has massive potential, if every person you come eyeball to eyeball with is more valuable than you could ever know, we better talk about our phones because we spend a lot of moments on it. We, 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 we have a lot of conversations on it. We see a lot of people on it. And so we got to talk about it. So with that said, we're going to. Why don't you guys come up? We're going to have a good conversation. Uh, why don't you guys welcome to the stage Shauna Patterson, Kelsey Settle, Tyson Campbell. It's going to be fun. We're just going to chat. I think it's important. Yeah, I think this looks good. How's this look, guys? Look good? I think this is perfect. Check. Mike sounds silly. Do they sound silly? Okay. Awesome. So, just give us your name, um, what you do right now, and, uh, and what grade you lead. Sorry, friends. Is there anything I can do about this? Any thoughts? Let's go. Let's keep going. All right. My name is Shauna Patterson. I just started my first junior junior year, first semester at Webster University, and that's what I'm doing right now. Nice. What grade do you lead? I lead eighth grade girls. Nice. Shout out. There they are. Sam, great. Hey, I'm Kelsey. I work in marketing at a company called Fusion, and I lead junior girls. What's up? My name is Tyson. Uh, I teach high school kids, so I get to hang out with high school kids all day, every day, and uh, I hang out with the ninth grade boys. Woo! <laughs> yes, uh, one of you is excited that I'm your leader. Um, Only one. Everyone else is a ninth grade boy, and they're like, oh, man, is he going to call so, me? So the fir first things first, I think we got a couple, I think we had a couple TikTok videos turned in, and I just want to see them. I want to see them. Cause, so can we put them up on the screen? Uh, I think we had a few turned in. Um, if we can roll those clips. It's great. <laughs> That's really good. That actually got a good response too. What's the next one? Do we have another one? Can, can I do something real quick? Oh. Three, two, one. Oh. I told you not to do that. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have one more. We have one more. See, 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 Kumalala, 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 Sylvester. Kumalala, 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 Sylvester. Oh, no, 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 Sylvester. Oh, no, 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 Sylvester. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I thought TikTok was like dance videos. Are they normally? I mean, it sounded really good. That honestly was impressive, but I just didn't know if it was. Are they normally dance videos, or is it just kind of like just let's just be creative, have some fun? Okay. Cool. All right. So how much time do you guys spend on social media per day, screen time? Not even social media, just maybe phones. And um, are you satisfied with how much time you spend on your devices? Uh, in prepping for this, I like check the screen time uh, setting or notification. No setting. Uh, and it was like three and a half hours. And that was kind of alarming to me. Um, whenever I looked down the breakdown and then like my brokenness and like my almost addiction to my phone was like I like justified it. And I was like, oh, well, it counts, you know, the time that I listen to audible books or it counts, you know, the podcast and everything. But then it also counts like the five hours I spent on social media and the three hours that I spent on my games and things. So what games again, do you play? Uh, well, 
Uh, I'm pretty good at Clash Royale. I'm not going to lie to you. Clash Royale. Um, yes. Are there any Clash I, I, Royale I will, fans? I will beat most of you in here. Nice. Um, <laughs> yes. So, uh, but no. So, yeah. And it's it was, like, kind of interesting because we're in a social media or we're in a phone series here at the Edge. And I was, like, you know, unsettled by the amount of time I spent on my phone a week. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, similar situation. I'm between four to five hours, depending on the week. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, well, I answer emails all the time for work. And then my phone was like, and you spend two hours on Instagram. So um, that was kind of shocking. Granted, I do have two Instagram accounts. One is at KCC Eats Mexican. If you want exclusive Mexican <laughs> reviews, make sure to give it a follow. <laughs> Didn't tell Josh I was doing that. Yeah, that's um, really good. <laughs> but no, I wish I spent much less time on my phone. I spend like four hours uh, average per day on my phone. I go in and out of whether I'm satisfied or not with it because sometimes I'll be really good and through the day I'll be like productive and I'll get everything done, have my quiet time. But then at night, Facebook just reels me in and I get sucked into the videos that just keep popping up and I'm in two hours deep every single night. So I go back and forth with it. Raise your hand if you have Facebook. Raise your hand if you're a student that has Facebook. <laughs> nice. You guys are my people. That's neat. So, so why would you be dissatisfied? Like, it seems like you're like, oh, it's alarming. It's unsettling. Why? Why is that unsettling to you? I think for me, because of the times that I most frequent it, you know? So I'm, I have the most wonderful wife ever, and I've got a beautiful kid. And so, like, my time with them is sometimes limited because of the other things that I have to do. Like, you know, I got to go to work and I got to do different things and I got to commute and I get the joys of serving in different places and things. But, like, whenever I'm there, I should be more engaged in those relationships and trying to be more intentional with those types of situations um, rather than just, like, mindlessly scrolling or, you know, wasting time on my phone for me. Ditto. Um, I still live at home, so like part of that is like the family aspect. If I were to just put down my phone and go talk to my parents out in the living room, that would probably make their night because they don't get to see me very often. I'm always on the go. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of unsettling because you waste so much time, and it is like you do get a sense of joy from it, but then afterwards you're like, I wish I would have spent my time doing something else. Like I could get joy from so many different things and I could use the skills that God give, has given me like art or writing or something. I don't even know, but something like that where you could spend your time elsewhere. Yeah, I live um, with three friends and I honestly probably could have great conversations every single night if I wanted to. Um, and I just don't because I'm in my room. And when I like look back at my favorite just memories and moments of life, like I don't think one of them involves my phone. They always involve, you know, relational, being with people, doing things. It's never like, oh yeah, I loved that one Tuesday. I was on TikTok. Like I'm not gonna remember that. So, just like in the sense of Josh's point of like you have one shot making memories and like using your time wisely. I'm never glad I pick my phone. Yeah, I think, so like for me, the, at the beginning of this year, I've kind of been in the process of like writing down like annual goals and different things that I want to accomplish. And some of them would be like spiritual, others of them are just relational. And then some of them are just like really practical and different things that take place. And so I've, I've kind of got this new planner and I've been kind of like working through some of these different goals. And I've realized like, and this might be something good for you guys to do is like, you know, maybe if you're a, a musician or if you're an athlete and just again let's even take kind of the spiritual aspect out of it for a second although I don't know if that's possible but anyways um, and le and let's say you're like hey these are my goals for the year uh, I think I think that if you were like okay if I want to accomplish these you would probably realize I just don't have that much time to spend on social media or to spend video gaming or whatever it is if I actually want to accomplish those things like mine had to do with reading books. And so like, I'm going to read four hard copy books this month in January. Okay. I'm well on my way to do it. I'm going to get it done. And, and I wouldn't have done that in December if it weren't for not being on social media and not being on my phone 
you know, again, four hours a day or whatever it is. I've deleted social media from my account and I've get on it. I've probably been on it about 20 minutes a day. And I'm not saying that to brag because I think I'm a phone addict, but I think this, this month to me, I'm like, well, I, I think if I, if it was a normal month for me, like last month, there's no way I could actually accomplish what I wrote down at the beginning of the month. If it, if I just kind of played it by year with all this. And maybe you aren't wanting to read four books a month. <laughs> maybe you're like, that sounds horrible. Um, but let's say you're like, I want to become the best athlete ever. I want to become stronger. I want to become better at my, you know, whatever, musically. I want to develop better relationships. I, I think you'll just realize there isn't that much time for me to just goof around on my phone for hours on end. I think it's just would be interesting, maybe a good exercise for you to think about doing. Uh, what's your favorite thing you've seen on the internet recently? Well, I really love this TV show called Survivor, and a new season's coming up with 20 past winners, and they've been interviewing them. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's, extra that's amazing. I used to watch Survivor. Any Survivor fans in the room? Any student Survivor fans in the room? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are my people. That's great. Actually, I don't watch Survivor. I used to. Loved it. Um, anybody else? Um, who went to Passion? Give it up. Passion Conference. Let's go. Yep. So I I followed them on Instagram afterwards, and I friended them, liked their page on Facebook afterwards, too. And they've just been posting a lot of cool videos and recaps from worship, from messages, from, like, the door the door holders, the people that volunteered for Passion, and it's just been really cool to like relive it kind of, and it's just really encouraging too. Nice. Tyson? Yeah, so mine wasn't on the internet, um, just because mobile phones and how cool they are and how amazing they are. Um, I went out of town this past weekend, uh, took some kids to Kansas City for a competition, um, and didn't get to see like the fam that much, so Saturday morning woke up um, and then went down to the lobby and got to FaceTime with my wife and baby Reese, and she just like dad dad and like waved and things and just like filled my heart, so yeah, it was pretty cool, because otherwise I would have went you know, almost an entire week without, you know, inner interaction with them. Yeah, that's great. Um, that's cool. I have a video that I'm really just doing because I, I love my, I'm showing because I love my wife. Um, what, what did the, what did the caption say under the video? It's the wrong video. Okay. So I'm pretty sure that I'm going to show it anyways. Um, so the video essentially has, has two raccoons has two raccoons. I hear whispering, I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's supposed to say quick, act like a tree or something like that. And and so there are these two raccoons that get caught red-handed, like sneaking around and it's just funny. So just, here's the video. Um, this is my wife's favorite video ever. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> That's amazing. So anyways, uh, that was actually pretty good. It's grown on me. The first time I saw it, I was like, eh, and then it's pretty good. Um, okay. How can, okay, so we've talked about, can we all acknowledge if you've been here for the first couple of weeks, we've talked about how our phones can be used for harm more than we've talked about how they can be used for good. Some of you, that's annoyed you. Um, and you're like, well, I want to talk about the good aspects. And so we're going to do that. Just we're going to kind of turn a page. We're going to talk about the negatives. We're going to talk about the positives and some practical things that we can do. So how do you think um, our phones can be used for good in any order that you would like to, to, to share? Just communication as a whole is so amazing nowadays um, with the availability to keep kind of intimate cool relationships with people that you already have right so I'm not talking necessarily social media in this sense more like I know some of you guys like direct message is kind of old but yes text messages are still cool people um, you can encourage people so I actually went to school um, not in this area and a lot of my friends live really distantly far apart um, and with I guess hanging out with some more spiritual spiritually mature people in this church. I've been listening to 
promptings from the spirit and listening to kind of um, what the Holy Spirit and if there's like a prompting that I have, I try to reach out to that person and I try to like give them positive texts and positive affirmations through that. Um, and one was because of, he's pretty active on social media and he's got a lot of things going on. I just sent him a message and be like, hey, I know you're doing a lot of different things. I know you're, you know, really active here and you're doing this, but um, you're more than that. You're beautifully made, and you are in the image of the Father, and give yourself a break, take a step back, and you're amazing in that sense. And he just, like, sent me back, like, the three emoji crying faces. Um, so I totally made his day, and then we, like, called and talked to me that night for, like, two hours. And that was just 100% of just listening to promptings and what God put on my heart and then using the platform that we have through social media and kind of, you know, putting that, but then also reaching out to him and just building that relationship. And he lives in Tulsa. So um, squad might be going there. Hopefully you guys get to meet him. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I actually kind of encouraged Tyson to talk about how he encourages people because I think he does a great job of it. There have been multiple times just in my journey where I've received a long intentional text from Tyson saying, love you, thanks, blah, 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 those type of things. Uh, and it makes a big difference. And I think he makes a good point in one sense. And I think on the other side of the corn, there's a truth where, you know, our phones can bring about intimacy, but I also think our phones can bring about like fake intimacy. And so like your guys is it's like, you think, oh, I'm building a really good friendship with this person, but really you're just like, what's up? Nothing. Sending pictures of your hair or whatever it is on Snapchat and, or like the wall and different things. And and it and it's, can be really, really shallow, but you're like, I'm talking to him all the time, but there's just no depth at all. And so I think like what Tyson said there when it comes to sending encouraging text messages, like scripture talks about how Christians like stand out and are different. And I think a really, really good way to like stand out, to be holy, to be different, to love people a little bit more is not just to like talk to people through your devices, but actually be intentional and bring about a little bit of depth where you're like trying to encourage them, trying to build them up, trying to share things that are important that actually add value to their life. And so sending encouraging texts and different things I think could do a whole lot more than you could ever possibly imagine in this day and age where they're used to, again, getting pictures of that curtain right there on Snapchat, you know? So I think it's, it's just something to, uh, to think about. So something else that you can do on social media is uh, share the gospel. What? Yeah, you can't. So when I was thinking about this this week, I was like, I want to like give them a visual, something that they can remember. So just imagine that your social media platform or your video game platform, I don't really know much about video games, but let's just say that, it's a poster board. And you're standing on the side of a street and every single car that passes by is one of your followers or one of your friends or one of the people that you talk to on video games. They're seeing what's on your poster board and it's up to you to make the choice of what you want on that poster board. So you can choose to share a verse or you can choose to go with culture and share what they're saying about different topics. Um, but that's basically what I thought of. And I know that this, our phones, I don't have my phone. Our phones are a gift from God and it can be used for good, but it can also be used for, for bad if we choose that. Um, and I know from personal experience, if you share a verse on your Instagram story, if you share your quiet time and not just that you're doing your quiet time, but what you like what you're taking away from your quiet time, if you share that on your story, you might lose followers and you might even lose real friends in life. And that's just how it goes. But you have to remember that you are sharing the gospel and you are doing what God has called you to do and you're making, you're potentially making followers of Jesus Christ and that's what we're called to do as believers. Yeah, and I think the world, that's great. And I think the world's like hungry for it. And so I think like some people are going to be like, eh, it's weird, not going to look at this. But I think also it might spark some interest. I've wrestled with, for me, like, do I post this stuff? Because some of the stuff I post is just like a video of me talking. And I'm like, I don't know how that's going to look to people. Um, but really the reason I post it is I don't really care if you see it or if you see it or if you see it. But I have friends from high school who don't know Jesus at all that I think at least have a little respect for me. And I care if they see it, like I want them to hear it. And, and there have been times where I have friends who don't know Jesus at all that 
will like repost it, be like, my boy knows what he's talking about. And I'm like, I don't think you listen to that because I don't think you believe that. But, um, but it, it, it is, I think a lot of times, especially if we're doing it for a reason to make a difference in people's lives, I know it might be intimidating and different things, especially if you're a student, but posting things that are good and lovely and admirable and things that point people to Jesus is a really, really big deal. And, uh, and I think it's important and I think we need to do it. Um, I forgot something. Also, most of your followers and most of the people that you follow, you know nothing about. Like you're gonna know only what they post on their social media and what you post on your social media, some people, that's all they know about you. And so if you have that influence on them, I think you would want them to know the good, the gospel rather than the other things that you're pretending to be or that you're trying to gain approval from. So I just wanted to add that. It's great. It's great. I think you do a great job of it. Yeah, and I think similarly to what Shauna said, you can kind of be like on the receiving end of that. So I follow a ton of people like Shauna, Josh, Tyson, and just different preachers and um, getting to hear like their encouragements or seeing what they're doing, following like the Oak Bridge Edge Instagram and being reminded of our reading plan or whatever, just those constant reminders of, you know, what's important and to get off my phone is huge. And then also like, for example, I have two nephews who don't live here getting like to see pictures of them and then getting to see pictures of sunsets or someone posts a new worship song or someone went to this really cool mountain. Like I think there is a way to look on social media and like recognize God's goodness through it, through whether it's people or, you know, like a pretty landscape or whatever it is. I think there's a way to like give him that glory when you see that beauty. So that's another way. Yeah. That's good. And I would even say for your own life, like these three examples of how you can use your phone is like, I'm just convinced that this generation, when it comes to Gen Z and even millennials, like I think a lot of us are just sick of the status quo with this stuff. Like it just gets boring. It gets sort of like, what in the world are we even doing? And so I would just encourage you, like if there's any sense, any sense at all of like a holy discontent of like maybe there's just something more when it comes to this, I would just encourage you to have a conversation about it tonight. Like what would that look like? What would maybe one change uh, be that I could make when it comes to how I treat my phone or digital media or video games or that type of thing? Uh, last question and we're going to pray and sing one more song, um, is what would be like one practical piece of advice, kind of like, that was a decent segue, um, what would be like a practical piece of advice that you would give to students when it comes to their phones and devices and that type of thing? Go ahead. Okay. Um, so <laughs> last week in small group, um, some of my girls might remember, we were talking about how you seek approval from Instagram or you're comparing yourself a lot of the girls, but even guys do that with sports. I don't, I'm not a guy, so I don't know. But uh, we follow bloggers, we follow influencers, we follow all these companies that post things that make us want to seek approval. And I think it's good to point out that if you're following people who are making you compare yourself to them or seek approval from them or from people like them and you're not seeking approval from God, then just unfollow them. Um, I know from my experience, Sadie Robertson, she's great. She's amazing, but I can't follow her because I will compare myself all day to her. And she is perfect. I love her, and it's nothing against her, but it's everything to do with my heart, and that is just true for anything really in life. If it's making you go off the path that God wants you to, wants you to be on, then you just need to get off and reset and just, I still check up with her. I'm like, hey, girl, what you up to? But you guys are buds. I can't follow her. Yeah. I wish we were buds. Yeah. It's good. Um, so I think, like, on a large um, scale, first, you just have to be intentional and specific about how you want to use your phone. Because if you're not intentionally saying this is exactly how I want to use it, I'm going to be smart, I'm going to be strategic, you're going to accidentally spend hours on it. No one accidentally is going to spend less time on your phone. That's just not going to happen. So I would say come up with a plan and be strategic and intentional about it. Um, and then one thing I like, one thing I would recommend is set either an amount of time or if you can do it a whole day, I think you guys could, and just say I'm not going to get on social media at all. And I think that 
A, you'll spend less time scrolling through your phone, but B, I think it'll be like a really good eye opener to how often you pick up your phone and how often you open up Instagram. Because I don't think, if, you're not, if it's not on the top of your head, if you're not thinking about it, it's such an easy, mindless pickup that when you're intentional about not getting on it, it'll really show you how often you are on it. Yeah, so for me, I had two kind of practical things. Um, one, super practical, in the evening time or like right whenever you're getting ready to go to bed, like keep your phone somewhere, like put it in the living room um, or put it in like the dining room or put it by your book bag or put it by wherever your shoes are for the next day. Don't bring it into your bedroom because whenever we bring it into our bedroom, oftentimes it's the last thing we look at before we go to sleep, right? And it's the first thing we pick up whenever we wake up, right? Give yourself some time to just mentally decompress from the world, right? I think it was a couple weeks ago, we talked about like, sometimes our phone don't allow us to be like by ourselves and just decompress with that. Um, and I think that's like a really good step for everything. And that kind of leads me into my second point. Um, to be honest, right? Whenever we are in our rooms by ourselves, we are more likely to do things that we potentially wouldn't do around other people. So again, that can lead us down some, you know, sexual perversion things where we are able or potentially looking at some content that we shouldn't be looking at when we're by ourselves in our room. Um, so also maybe, you know, if that's something that you're thinking about or struggling with, right, set those settings in your phone, right, that there are filters that you can control what does or does not pop up on your search engines and websites that specifically get blocked and they're passcode protected. Give somebody else that passcode to that. So that way that takes it out of your hand, you know, invite someone else into that sort of situation with you. Um, but again, so that way when we're searching things or you're looking stuff up, that mature content doesn't come up because again, the, that's not something that we potentially even need to be exposed to, right? And again, that is more of a like really practical thing. I lied. For I, some have, of us. I have one more question. Yeah, uh, go. I'll just have one of you guys share it, and then I'll close. Um, or you, I don't really care. Y'all, if you can, if you want, I don't know. Whatever. Um, the question. The question is. So like. If you don't, if you can't tell by now, one of the themes of this conversation is, is man, we're just on our phones too much. Uh, that would be like what there would probably be like a, like we would all kind of concede that reality to you guys. Um, but there's a difference. There is a difference, like psychologically right now between your generation and our generation, because some of y'all are on your phone like seven hours a day, eight hours a day, and you're like, I wish I was on at nine, right? Like. Like, seriously, some of you, like, there's studies that are out where it's like, some of you, like, a lot of us are like, yeah, I play video games all day, every day, and it's amazing, I'm, I would kill you in it, I'm really good. And, and so, like, a lot of you, there's a, there's a difference where there's like this, there's this, like, discontentment here where it's like there's something wrong then some of you are like I don't see what the big deal is why do we keep talking about boundaries on our phones it's not that big of a deal it's fun it's awesome it would be so boring without it so just give like maybe like one reason to, as to why maybe they should consider spending less time on it okay so some I remember from when I was in high school people used to walk around with earphones or gosh I sound old um, AirPods in or whatever their headphones, I don't know what they're called now. Um, <laughs> but they used to walk around with them or they would have their face in their phone and sometimes I am the exact same in public. I'm not trying to be a little angel here, but um, one thing that when we were talking earlier, I was just like, you middle schoolers and high schoolers, you guys have the most impact and the most influence you ever will have in your life right now. And I didn't notice that when I was in high school or when I was in middle school because I thought like, oh, just go class, day after day after day, turn in homework, hang out with the friends that you have. But you have so much influence in the groups that you're in, whether in your sports, band, art, even in your classrooms, you have so much influence. And when you get to college, you're by yourself, kind of. Like, you have to start over if you don't have friends with you. And I think that's good to notice and it's good to embrace that you have so much influence right now. And so get your like nose out of your phone kind of thing, but. Yeah, that's good. There's a, like, yeah, if you got the AirPods in, like you are communicating, okay, to everyone around you that what's in here is definitely more important than 
than than your face and the conversation we could be having. It's just it is a reality. Anybody else that you would want to give a yeah? Can I piggyback off that real quick? Yeah, go for it. Okay, thanks. Um, because again. I work at a high school, so I have kind of a unique perspective of, I get to see it every day, right? So I get to see the way you guys interact with your peers every day in my classes. So like one quick story, and it, it echoes everything that you were saying, like the very first is, you don't know like the experiences and the opportunities that you have, right? If you stopped and looked at the person in your like in your class like who sits directly across from you that maybe you've sat with now for five or six months and you don't know their name or you know like they're in your class and you know their face be like what's their name again right maybe you stop and you think like that person is beautifully made in the image of the father and they have a story and they have a background and they have experiences and just like opportunities to where you can get to know them maybe again I don't live like in this crazy fictitious right that you're gonna be the happiest bestest best friends and you guys are you know gonna have slumber parties and things but maybe you build a loose working relationship with them and they become an associate right and then uh, ready here you go fast forward six years later right maybe you have class with this pretty girl um, who's kind of quiet and she's like kind of nerdy and things and at the time let's be honest maybe you were a little crazy and you were you know didn't do the, make all the right choices but six years later right she uh, slides into your DMs and Hello. she's like hey right she's like hey how's it going how's Oklahoma and things and you're like oh it's super good right um, how's teaching I'm thinking about getting into teaching and she's like oh I love teaching you know and she's running and you're an athlete and things and next thing you know right something builds from that like loose association I, I joke with my high school kids all day every day because I tell them I would not have married the love of my life if I was in your generation because I would have been on my phone and I wouldn't have had to talk to her because you want to talk about being old I had this like old school school Brit Kia Sarah phone um, in high school and it cost like per text and um, you like pulled up the antenna like three inches to get better service. Uh, leaders and adults, you guys can laugh. Kids, you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, it's a brick. Like they use them to make houses, I think now. Um, but right. It like I, I joke, but again, it's not right. God, like he had a purpose and he put us together for a reason. And I swear that it wouldn't have happened if I would have been a decade later because of, again, I see the way you guys don't interact with your peers and it makes me sad. Wow. I don't know that I can follow It's going to be tough to follow. I, like you, I haven't yeah, met my to, husband. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah. Uh, no, I would just say like, clearly like for the memes, like your good memories, what you're going to like look back and love. It's, it's not going to be centered around a phone. Like some of my, for example, some of my favorite days that I can remember is like a few weddings I've been in where I had no clue where my phone was all day. Or maybe I accidentally forgot my phone at home once and went over to a friend's house. And those are the times where you have the best conversations and you're, it's not, you're not even thinking about it. Like the wedding is the, the weddings I've been in have been the best example because you have no clue where it is. So you're not even thinking about it. and You're so much more engaged and in the moment and laughing. And it's just a different feeling when you don't have that distraction. So when you're with other people, especially just fight that urge. Yeah, I think, I think my thought is, is, um, it might be wrong. Um, but I think my thought is, is like, if the message of Jesus wasn't true, if what we talked about before the, they came up and if what we talked about wasn't true, the fact that people spiritually are apart from God could potentially be apart from God forever. If, if Jesus has you here for a purpose to make a difference in people's lives, if that wasn't true, I don't think I'd be having this conversation right now. Like, I don't think it would be as important like for us to actually have this conversation. I still think it would be valuable because I think people's lives are impacted by it in a, in a negative way. But I actually believe that message is true. Like I think people that you come into contact with every single day are apart from God. And I think the people who know God are the only ones who can do anything about it. And I think for many of us, we get so distracted by this. And again, we lose our place in this grand story that God is writing uh, right before us because, again, we're just caught up in things that are seen and things that maybe at times aren't very important. But with that said, we aren't, we aren't like saying never be on this. I think I'm just going to try and never be on it. 
<laughs> but I also realized that I might fail and that my, I might come back next week and be like, oh, I relapsed. Um, but, uh, but I think, I think for, for, for you, we know you're going to be on it. I know you're going to be on it. Um, it's just, what are you going to do with it? How are you going to leverage it? Um, how are you going to leverage the games? Okay, like I think all that could be used. I think God could use it, and I think he wants to use it. So I'm going to pray that he does, and then the band's going to come up, and we're going to sing. Can we give these friends a round of applause first, though? That's good. It was really good. Those are fun. Those are fun. I like so those. Good. Let's do so those good. every week. Um, Father, we uh, love you and are grateful for these people um, on the stage. Uh, Right here, these three folks, grateful for the people walking on to stage who are going to lead us in worship, uh, for the leaders in the room, for the students in the room, um, and uh, for the fact that something special takes place when we gather around truth. Uh, and so, Father, I pray that tonight is more than just, again, maybe an academic exercise or a conversation, but I pray that it can bring about a little bit of change in our lives. No, I pray that it can bring about maybe just a conversation, uh, maybe just some thoughts that we hadn't really thought about beforehand. And uh, God, I pray that, that again, maybe some changes could be made for the better uh, to where we, we could experience more of your joy and your peace and your goodness that you maybe want to display to us in a more tangible, personal, personal intimate way. Uh, Father, I, I pray, I pray more than anything uh, that your message, that the story of God and his people could be, could be on the forefront of our minds as we walk out of here. Father, I pray that we could understand life is a vapor. Tomorrow isn't promised. Lives are at stake. Eternity is before us. And you have given us the keys to impact all of it. You've given us the message that you say is the power of God that brings salvation to all who believe. And God, I pray that we leverage that message well. I pray that I leverage that message more effectively in the days to come. On my phone, on my devices, on video games that I don't play. Um, God, we love you. And we're grateful that you have given us a responsibility. You have put us right where we're at for such a time as this. And I just pray that we don't miss it. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand up and let's go to God.